you are um, if you are connected via the Zoom, if please make sure that you are muted. Thank you. All right, everybody ready? Recording in progress. The City of Glendale Common Council session, everybody Pledge of Allegiance. Would you please call the roll? Mayor Kennedy? Here. Alderman Vukovic? Here. Alderman Doherty? Here. Alderman Gelhart? Here. Alderman Wheezy? Here. Alderman Schmelzling? Here. Alderman Shaw? Here. Thank you all for coming out for uh, yet another Common Council meeting this week. Uh, we do have one item of new business, and this is something we have been working on for uh, the last few months. Um, as you know, the city administrator has been giving us updates on where negotiations were. Um, uh, last week, the village of Fox Point did approve a resolution indicating that they would um, conditionally approve the amended and restated joint library agreement for the North Shore Library. Um, as of just a few minutes ago, the village of River Hills has now approved um, uh, a similar resolution. Uh, we are waiting at this point to hear from the village of Bayside to find out if they have approved it, because I have been very clear that this council, I would not put before you a resolution uh, or of any sort unless the other three communities agreed to the agreement first. So at this point, we are waiting to hear from Bayside and I'm gonna I will ask the city administrator if you'd like to walk us through uh, just sort of where we are and what we think our potential timelines. Uh, before you is discussion and action on a resolution conditionally approving an amended and restated joint library agreement for the North Shore Library. Uh, as a reminder, in August of 2020, the Common Council did vote to uh, leave the North Shore Library, uh, had a, a committee created to review library uh, needs of the community. Uh, that committee information uh, was available to the public and uh, Common Council did review the committee's uh, work as well as uh, the recommendation from the committee. Um, at the same time as the recommendation was coming out, uh, we received notification that the Village of Bayside may have a opportunity to have a new facility for the North Shore Library and asked the uh, member communities, including the ones that had uh, given notice to exit um, that I'm trying to let people in at the same time, I'm sorry. Um, that uh, they may have this opportunity and would these com uh, communities be willing to look at a new uh, North Shore Library agreement and consider a North Shore Library facility in the village of Bayside. Um, the uh, managers and myself uh, worked uh, for a, a few months and uh, looked at uh, the agreement and what could be done uh, to be better for all parties. Uh, what we have in front of us in the agreement is a majority of what Glendale had uh, asked for, um, including an equal split of a portion of the expenses to be shared by all because we all are required to have a library. Um, that, that is a state statute. Um, there's information in the new agreement that also makes clear uh, it, the importance of having a capital budget, uh, which is something that has been challenging for the, the current structure um, and how we got to a point where our current library needs considerable renovations and uh, is because we were not keeping up, um, as all the member communities, we're not keeping up with the uh, upkeep of the facility to ensure uh, that it stayed current. Uh, further clarification about the fiscal agent and uh, that the fiscal agent would receive funding. Uh, the identification of a community coordination council, which essentially is supposed to be more of a staff meeting between the managers, the administrator, and the library director, uh, giving the managers and the administrator um, expertise to the library director that they don't always have. They don't deal with human resources 
um, on a, a regular basis as we do. They don't necessarily uh, deal with budgets and capital projects as often as we do, and that we could be resources. Uh, mostly it's in the contract to ensure that if any of us were to depart from our positions, that it would uh, go ahead and force that uh, issue to uh, continue um, because it is by, by agreement. Ownership of the assets, also very important, um, as currently one of the, the discussions had been with our current facility that the city of Glendale owns the facility, hence uh, the challenges of uh, the current rent situation. Um, this facility would be uh, given to the library board. They would have that control. So as state statute requires, we would the municipalities would fund the library per their requests, um, and that uh, once they get their funding, they have to allocate, that board has to allocate the funding properly in order to um, make sure that they're able to maintain the facility and the operations. Overall, uh, those are a majority of it. The, the resolution itself uh, is due to uh, the challenge of the timing uh, the developer would like to know that the four communities are agreed to move forward uh, so that they know how they can plan their development. Uh, Village of Bayside, it was having approvals for zoning tonight in addition to their library agreement. So I'm hoping to hear about that as well. I just heard from Walney that- Okay. okay. President Walney just let me know that they approved the agreement, so. Wonderful. And so uh, the next steps, of course, if we were all in a concert to moving forward would be to figure out the capital and the rest of that process um, and for Bayside to go through their process to ensure that the development could be built that um, I believe uh, there's expectation that everything would go through by the end of December and uh, once it goes through, the plan would be to break ground on the new library as a first part of that project in spring. Before we engage in any discussion among the council, I do have uh, our, our agenda was noticed that if anybody in the public wanted to speak to the issue, they needed to reach out to their alderman or the mayor and advance the meeting. I uh, have heard from two individuals that wanted to speak. Um, so first, I guess uh, uh, one person is in the audience. So Al, if you'd like to speak, if you want to come up here to the, uh, the microphone, please. When you speak, if you please speak directly into the mic, you'll notice this little red part here will light up. That means that people on the Zoom can hear you. So speak directly into the mic. All right, thank you. Say your, yep, your name and address, please. Thank you. 610 West Riverview Drive, Glendale, Wisconsin, 53209. I, I, I think uh, as important as this issue is, um, we do, the citizens don't know enough, enough about uh, the process, where the facility should be, who should we go it alone, or should we not? So I am going to say to all of you, this should be put into a referendum. Give us all the information and let the citizens vote on this and give direction to uh, all of you, and then we can decide. Personally, I'm, I'm, I'm seeing this first now into uh, being uh, proposed that we, we have a facility in Bayside and I think it's too far away for many of the citizens here uh, in Glendale, too far away. So I would, I would encourage you to uh, put this into a referendum with all, all the choices and then you'll hear from all of us uh, in the voting booth, okay? Thank you very much for your comment. Uh, we also have uh, Rob Cronwell, who I don't see here in the chamber. So Rob, are you on the Zoom? If you'd like to unmute, please. Sure, it has me as Karn, sorry about that. Uh, that's okay. I um, noticed that you did send a, a series of questions this morning. I forwarded those to the city administrator and she did reply to your questions. So I'll turn it over to you then you know, for any other comments you'd like to make. Sure, uh, Robert Cronwell, 7530 North Applewood Lane. Uh, the first comment I would like to make is that why are we rushing so fast on 
this artificial deadline to get this uh, agreement passed. The agreement doesn't take effect until January of next year. And everybody, including the other municipalities, have put so many conditions on that have to be met before it'll be signed off on. It doesn't look like anybody will even sign the document for, for a number of weeks. It, it seems like we're just trying to rush to lock in this victory on getting the, the cost sharing uh, part of the, the agreement renegotiated, which is great and it's a great victory for Glendale. It's very helpful, but I think we kind of have some blinders on here that we're, we're just focused on this particular agreement and what the council needs to do is take a deep breath, step back and ask themselves what's best for Glendale as a community, what do the residents actually want? And then as a, an afterthought, can we actually afford it? Um, no one was actually ever given the choice of choosing between a library in Glendale and a library up in Bayside. Um, but the information that came back from the library committee surveys was that the majority of people wanted to keep it here in Glendale. And if we sign on to this uh, updated North Shore library agreement, the library is moving up to Bayside. I, I know for one, it's too far. I'll be going to, to Brown Deer. I won't be going up to the new location. Um, a lot of residents in my area have expressed the same thoughts. Um, and I just would like the council to just pause, take a look at the big picture and realize that what the community has said it wants and what's most beneficial to Glendale is to keep a public library here in Glendale. And we can't do it by joining this agreement. As an afterthought, then you have to go to referendum to be able to pay for it. Um, but you said that that would probably happen coming this spring. So it's not a question we have to wait that long to get an answer to. And if the citizenry is willing to, to pay for it, then we go ahead and, and, and do it. Uh, if they're not, well, then we're back to where we are now. And at that point, we can still reach out to the North Shore Library with the three communities in it and see if we can join them or reach out to Brown Deer. Um, also, there's just so many questions about this proposed move of the library and how it's going to come about and frankly, how much it's going to cost. Uh, before it was estimated, it costs like $2 million on Glendale's part to to uh, build out and relocate to the new library. I've heard estimates anywhere from the whole project will cost four to $8 million for the build out and move. Um, that's something else to consider, even though we're getting the space for free, supposedly, that's not even worked out yet. It doesn't mean that there won't be a lot of costs associated with this or that those costs wouldn't be about the same as what it would take to build our own library. So. I just think we should all pause, take a breath, remember what the, the community and the citizens have said, we wanna keep the library in Glendale and do our best to try to keep the library in Glendale. And if that fails, fine, we have alternatives available to us. Um, this developer's not going away if all four communities don't sign off on this agreement tonight. This is his second time around trying to get this, this development through up there. They bought all the property. They want to do the development. They want to make the money. If we back out and the three other communities go forward, it just means he has to turn over a smaller library space to them, which actually saves him money. This, this is not some kind of deal killer that has to happen tonight. This is an artificial deadline being imposed by an outside developer for a development that's not even happening in Glendale. And I don't think we should be pushed in this way uh, to a rush decision that locks us in for the next 23 years to an agreement we might grow to regret. Thank you. Amen. Okay, I will now open up to members of the council for discussion or questions for the city administrator. Anybody want to weigh in with their thoughts or comments? How about if we do this? So rather than starting with one or six, which is where I normally start, how about if I go three, two, one, four, five, six? So Alderman Gellhard first. Okay. Um, no, it's not lighting up. Sorry. 
It's still not. Mike is not. We're pausing for a moment to work out a mic issue. Uh, you can just use. There we go. We're sharing. I think that's important. Uh, so after Monday's meeting, I sent out an email to uh, the people in my district. Uh, that I have email addresses for. And I, I did get responses from uh, a lot of people, um, 15 responses, uh, 14 of them said that they were in favor of a standalone library in Glendale. And one said, let's go to Bayside. So uh, with that backdrop, I am concerned that if we sign on to this agreement, uh, we're locked in until 2045. Uh, that's an awfully long time. The first time that we could give notice of leaving would be January 1st of 2042. Uh, and my concern is that if we go ahead with this uh, and the residents don't use the facility, uh, then there'll be a common council that says, well, <laughs> we're paying half a million dollars for a library that our residents aren't using. And we can't get out of this for 23 years. Uh, and so that's a big concern of mine. Uh, in addition, uh, in looking at some of the materials uh, circulated this week, Brown Deer's uh, library budget, at least in the 2016, 2017 years, uh, was about 550,000 a year. That's about what we're paying in now. I think that if we did our own library, we could get uh, expenses to be around that figure, you know, not much more than what we're, we're spending right now. There's a big question about these build out expenses. Um, I have a, a sneaking suspicion that when it comes to that, Glendale is gonna be asked to kick in the $2 million that we were going to contribute to the renovation costs. As far as I'm concerned, uh, if we're spending $2 million on anything, it should be for a building in Glendale for a library in Glendale. Uh, a couple other concerns. Um, I did review the, the planned unit development uh, between Bayside and the developer. Uh, the agreement doesn't indicate that the library is being donated. Um, so I'm not exactly sure where things fit in there. Uh, I don't obviously don't wanna be in a situation where you know, we would have to pay rent or anything of that sort if we were to go in this direction. Um, Finally, it's, it's uh, clear that whatever library uh, iteration would be in Bayside would be larger. It's gonna be larger uh, expenses also. And so well, we should consider that, uh, you know, the amount that we would have to contribute is likely gonna have to be more just because it's a bigger facility. So uh, those are my comments. Um, I'll leave it for the next Alderman. Thank you, Alderman Doherty. I'm quite concerned that we don't really have enough input from the community, given the report came back to say build it in Glendale. And the input I've gotten from my constituents has been only on two fronts, really. It's been people wanting it in Glendale, and it's been people that didn't care about the library at all. So I haven't had anybody really coming to me saying that it has to be in, you know, Bayside's a wonderful option, even though I think there's some interesting pieces about this. Not being in Glendale is a big deal. I also am afraid of the time Given the challenges we had, the current library agreement with North Shore, I'm concerned about the, the length of time again, too, that if something doesn't go well, that's an awful long time. None of us will be saddling future people with a problem that we we caused, if, if you will, but we didn't, we don't have a solution because there's no getting out of it. So those, those are uh, quite concerning to me. And I do think we have, uh, there's something to be said that we haven't really got the input from people I would like to have had. You know, in situations, I think uh, John Fuchs said it, I think of all the times he's been involved with the city, this is probably one of the top five issues that have come up. So it's, it's a big deal. And I'd like to make sure we do it right. So I am concerned about pushing it today. Thank you, Alderman Vukovic.
Alder Alderman Weezy. Thank you. Uh, I'd like to compliment uh, Alderman for very clearly stating a bunch of things. Um, I do. I also surveyed my district and um, probably got about 20, 30 responses, half of which um, because my district is at the very northern end of the city, east or west of the river, majority of those people said, yeah, we don't have one in Glendale, we'll just go to Brown Deer. Uh, they're not going to go to Bayside. Uh, the other half were saying very definitely that they wished Glendale had their own library. So there's the, you know, the general feel. I have also some concerns regarding the, um, in the resolution, uh, it is stated that, excuse me, just when I find this, that um, we've negotiated, uh, the Fox Point, Bayside, River Hills, and Glendale have negotiated and agree, agreed upon a timeline, and most importantly, a preliminary budget. Um, when we do our financial planning, uh, we're going into the, the budget season right now. We have a very detailed budget that comes in front of us for our approval, uh, particularly when looking at monies of this nature. It's, it's significant dollars. And uh, I'm very uncomfortable that we haven't seen a defined budget that says, okay, this is where the money's going. Right now, it's just, you know, it, we think it's going to be this, it should be that. And it's a little bit difficult for me to get my arms around. So uh, that is uh, really some total for me. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Schmelzling. Thank you. Um, looks like you folks are still in my thunder. Um, <laughs> so to, to begin with, I think if we put this in the public's perspective, they've had this agreement in front of them for two days. Two days. Um, so an agreement, and we've been talking about moving to Bayside for a little while. I, I admit that, and I know that we've we've also had um, a public hearing, but that was before we had a lot of the detail um, about what this agreement would really look like. Um, and and I just feel like we're we're we are racing on this. Uh, I was very tempted at the last meeting just not even to have this meeting, but I figured it's, we'll get this out into the public, which is what it needs to be right now. So. I'm happy we're having the conversation. I think this is what we need to have. Um, you know, where could we go from here? Well, we could lay it over. We could, hey, we have a library committee. Maybe they should look at it. Um, we have a lot of things that we could do. We heard about referendum from someone. You know, we could look at that and say, if ours fails, that would be a contingency. We then sign up with these folks. Um, I know that's a delay, but it's a developer agreement. It's when I looked it over, they said they could have up to, 60,000 square feet of civic use, and that's the max. So how low does it go? I think there's things that we should be considering and we're just starting to get this feedback um, from the community. When one person noted the agreement was a little ambiguous and how the 5% was written up. And I looked at him like, yeah, if somebody was looking at this for the first time, I can see how that could be confusing. So it just, it takes, I think, more than just us to make this decision. Um, moving on to a few other thoughts. Um, capital costs, I, I guess my feeling is we've given the North Shore Library 35 years of free rent, place to have it. Um, I, I would hope that what we work out, and the council does have to approve it, would be no cost to the city for capital. And, and that's very unclear right now. I know it's written up as something we work out by the end of the year, but that's a big if. Um, furthermore, when I talk about community feedback, I've done some doors. I've also done this, you know, the email responses and things. And it's a split. You know, you look at it and and when it comes down to just people who have interest and in what they might be willing to do, uh, people who come to me are always the squeakier wheels because they're vested. They're probably the 40 some percent that use the library and the half of those that actually use the North Shore Library today. Um, but they're, uh, they're saying that they want a new library. Um, eight people versus seven on the interest level who came to me. And then, and we're all in different locations. That's the other interesting thing. Where would you exactly put a library if it's exactly ours? Because we're so spread out. Um, people I've actually went out and talked to indoors myself, a lot more people were fine with going to Bayside. 
um, when they had the full story in front of them. So I think we just need more time for this to kind of distill out and really know what the assumptions are. Are we going to throw in a whole bunch of capital or not? Um, my assumption is no. So anyhow, um, I see we, we have different things we could do. Um, I think we should let this stew a bit, get some more feedback. Um, it sounds like we're the only ones who are being asked to bend our schedule again. Um, if we have to go to referendum for our own library, why couldn't they go to help support their operational costs if we go alone on ours? Those are all the things that I think we can have, we can still have some discussions about um, if they can't wait. Um, yeah, so there's my thoughts. Thank you. Thank you, Alderwoman Shaw. First, I'm going to say right off the bat, I've heard horse of peace, meaning have her own, go at Bayside, or just tough it out and do, you know, do nothing. But from my experience, I've been on the library board itself since 2006. Since 2006, there has been either renovation, moving, everything has been going on. Nothing has changed in that time of frame. The library has been around since 84. I trusted the administration at that time when they put together this agreement. Again, it was a tough time trying to get four communities to cooperate. We're lucky we got what we did at that point in time. I trust our city staff, our current city staff. City administrator has done, went head, head whole hog to figure out exactly what's good dollar wise for us as a, the city as a whole. The city finance director, deputy city administrator has been around a very long time and knows exactly what's going on with the library and knows what's best for the city financially. City attorney has been around also, and I trust him as well with regards to anything that's coming with the library because he has been involved whole hog again, the whole time with both city administrators that I've been involved with. So we're gonna be either a borrower or lender. That's true for any library. I agree, I understand that the, um, the library committee suggests to have a Glendale um, standalone. Again, take in consideration the total cost because it's not cheap to stand alone anymore, especially nowadays. Why do you think we have joint agreements with a whole bunch of other things uh, throughout the city and the North Shore? So ultimately, this is a capital project. No one's gonna know the future. So we're not gonna be here at the end, but I understand we don't wanna saddle our future uh, elected officials. But again, I trust everyone involved and also the mayor has been involved since day one and has put his sense in and made sure he did his review and background checks of everything. These three individuals that are sitting up here today as uh, leadership for the city outside of us, I trust them to do the job when it comes to the library because I know they've looked at every corner, every nook and cranny to see what can be done. So I'll leave it up to them and trust their instincts. Even though I know my constituents were a horse apiece, I've heard, all three sides. So there you have it. Thank you very much. Um, yes. Are you ready to speak now? Go ahead. Alderman Vukovic, go ahead. I had to think. I, uh, in my district, we are the furthest from the North Shore Library as it is now. I'm just to be aware, I'm from uh, Bender Road, south, east of the river, all the way down to around Capitol. Um, at, originally, I was um, thinking both ways, like I see a point of having a library, but I also see a point where we can save some money with the Bayside. Then I go back to, even though all these aldermen here have had constituents speak, I think it was 30, 15, 20, 30. There are 12,000 people in Glendale. 12,000 people in Glendale or a little over that. And I have, I won't, I don't think I'm going to be swayed one way or the other because the people who actually reached out are the people that are just vocal about it. Um, I also looked at this, that there are some concerns about the, the payment and if we would have to pay into Bayside, we're gonna pay anyway. We're going to pay either um, 
uh, Ms. Sastrom, did you say a library to build was going to be around four to $5 million? Uh, to, to build a library and to, to furnish it, we would also need to uh, purchase all of the supplies, meaning books, audio, visual, computers. Uh, the current estimate we're looking at is somewhere between six and 10 million. Is paid for city hall. Okay, so six and 10 million. And the usership in Glendale is about 40%? 44% and that's adults and children. Okay, so I, I understand that we want a library. I also understand that we're gonna have a cost, but the cost is what, triple? What even if we did have to put in the Bayside, even if we did just stay alone and decide, you know what, forget Bayside, forget Brown Deer, we're just going to pay into the federal, I mean, the, the federal system and just, just not have a library anywhere. So I, I am going in and I've, I've thought a lot about it because I just don't, but with my constituent, not one single person reached out to me. Not one single person, except for one way, way a couple months ago when we first brought this out, no emails, no phone calls, and they're usually pretty vocal. And so I'm looking at this is they're letting me make the decision and it is what it is. I guess we'll know at election time, won't we? But um, I just, I don't see the only problem that I have in the thing that makes me not want to go with Bayside is the fact that we're in a deal for that many years. Now that does scare me. If we could go into this and if it was like five or 10 years in a, or even five years, and then we had a clause for three, but there's a lot of time between that. And if you can explain that to me, or if I'm not hearing that correctly, or put my mind at ease for that, because that is the deal breaker for me, because honestly, I'm sorry, I have a, a trust factor with Fox Point, Bayside and River Hills and how they have treated Glendale all this time. All of our deals, all of this, we have always been the, I guess the stepchildren of the, the you know, the, these, these agreements. And I'm, I just don't want it to happen again. So I am very in the middle right now. I don't know how I'm gonna vote right now, but I would like you to see if you can clarify some of my my concerns. And I understand. So the uh, as we were negotiating the agreement, one of the things that came out of my discussions with the council in closed session was the wanting of terms. The 20 years was a number that we just randomly picked and put in. We may be able to still amend that because that was something Glendale asked for was a term. Otherwise, it was perpetual with a three-year clause, and we asked not to be perpetual. That it was an ongoing agreement, and there was an out clause at some point, but it wasn't a set term. We had asked for a set term. That was something we did. 20 years is better than like, but you could still ask to, still ask to leave within three years but now they needed a term because that way, you know, when you have to renegotiate to some extent. Actually, it was a drafting issue. There, there was a three-year notice provision commencing at the end of the term, but then the term was stated as being perpetual. Uh -huh. So there would never be a notice provision. Can you so, explain that? I'm, I'm still not understanding that. So can you explain that again? Yeah, there was a, a clause in the initial draft that made the agreement perpetual, meaning forever. But then there was also a clause that you could leave on giving three years notice at the end of the term. If the term was perpetual, you would never get to a point where you gave the three year notice. So Rachel went back to them and uh, I, she can tell you more about it, where the number 20 came from, but at least she straightened that out. And there is a term, so there was at least a point in time where you could give notice. Whether that's a great number, a terrible number, that's all for you to decide. But she did straighten that out because the first draft, at first it was perpetual, but then you could give three years notice at the end. 
in a way that'd be like your app is automatically removing on your phone so that way you can continue with your game. <laughs> Do you have any other questions? I guess my only question is, and I asked this once before, what, what's an acceptable number? If I was to ask. I would expect that they'd need to have some kind of assurance that we wouldn't just sign up and leave right away. Um, that's part so of that's challenge. part of it is there. So, and of course, it, there are costs to set up a library. And if we leave, they're stuck footing the bill again, and they'd have to pay for 49% of the, the cost of operations. So I, I figure we should be some level reasonable there, but I think five is a good place to start given the history. So if we said, and I'm just asking this, terms could be five years from the completion of the library. So it, how long it might take two, three years for this to be completed and all the way through and into fruition. And then once it's open, could it be a five? Or I, would, I can bring that up. I, I can't commit. Um, no, I'm that, just asking, right. will you, are you willing to go back and, or do you think it's not a good thing to go back with this? Um, it, it is a challenge. And, and one of the challenges we have is that, let's say it's a five-year term and, and that we do start in 2022. And in five years is 2027. And we say, you know, we're not using it as much as we want to be using it. Well, what is the metric we're going to be using for now? You know, is it going to be, we have residents contacting us, we have this, what is the reason, or is it just because we, we feel we aren't getting a fair deal? I, I guess I would want to know what the metric is so that I can explain the five years uh, and what we're looking for to happen that when we go back and, and say, okay, five years is good, are we going to sign up for another five years? Are we reviewing it every five? Or are we, after five, we would be willing to go 15? I, I, I guess I want to understand the five, what, what our expectations are. Alderman Doherty. My concern would not to be not in the same boat we were in this time, right? We own the property, but there's a massively long lease. So we, we were in a situation we couldn't, we were putting up the money for it, not getting rent for it. Everyone else got the benefit of it. I and mean, we, you know, paid for our chunk of the benefit on it. And yet we couldn't, we, we still aren't out of the lease. So I don't want to be in the same boat we've been in before. I Five years that, and three out would be much better, long enough that I guess we're not talking, we're going to do it on a whim, but you know. Well, and that, I think that could be some of the concern. One of the things is, is we're not going to end up in that same situation because we, Glendale, are not going to own that building. And anything that we had talked about prior as it relates to, um, uh, talked about prior as it relates to contingencies with capital and what what our expectations are for capital costs and what our expectations are for who owns the building that has to be rectified by December 31st in order to move forward and if it's not rectified to the council's uh, provisions that we're anticipating then we're not going to sign off, we're going to move forward in that other direction. So I think that that's where our reassurances come is with these contingencies of what need to be rectified by December 31st to make sure that we don't end up with expenses we're not anticipating, including uh, finding out, you know, we want $2 million. No, that's already been agreed upon that that's not what we're anticipating. Alderman Weezy. Thank you. Um, and first of all, I do want to commend Rachel and the other managers. Uh, not only did they negotiate this draft agreement, they had done a previous one that in a couple of communities never even saw the light of day. They've done four or five previous. Yeah, ones. I know. And it's they've done tremendous work on this. So thank you for all that effort. Uh, now, uh, one factor uh, in consideration of the cost we're not talking about something that's going to be here today and gone tomorrow. Like the investment that we made as a city in this building, in this structure, um, that's going to be here for decades. And if we do opt to go in the direction of our own library, it's another thing that we're investing in decades in the future. 
So yes, it's in a consideration for today. Uh, what is it going to cost? But what is the accrued benefit over decades of use? And that to me is something that we do strongly need to consider. Okay, well, I wanna thank all the members of the council for their comments. I waited until the end. Um, so I do have some remarks that I wanna talk about. Um, I, I struggled with this when the Bayside proposal first came up. Rachel, when she told me, I knew that the library was about to release its findings within days. And I said, you gotta be kidding me. Um, because um, I, I fully supported leaving the existing library. I, you know, regularly talking with Rachel about the previous negotiations, how many times we had approved agreements only to have Fox Point and River Hills vote them down or not even put them on their agendas to consider it all. I was, I agreed with Rachel, I was done and I'm ready to walk away. We formed a committee uh, that did tremendous work and I commend the work of that committee and I fully support their recommendations for a, a library in Glendale. Um, I, I think that they, they did exactly what we asked and they came back to us with a proposal that I think is one that um, if this does not get approved tonight is the path we're going to take and I'm, I'm hoping that uh, uh, I'm hoping that that we can at least keep this one for Bayside an option so let me talk about a couple of things collaboration is really at the heart of how we do everything in the North Shore. We have a seven community fire department, a seven community 911 dispatch, a seven community health department. We have three communities about to be four communities as part of the North Shore Court. There are four communities that share IT services. We have four communities that share a school district. Um, it is how we do things here. We are all small cities and villages and we rely on one another. We pull our resources and we create better services because with more money we can provide, with more money coming from multiple communities, we can provide better than we can on our own. Um, I've heard talk of, of, a, of possibly joining with Brown Deer. The Brown Deer Library is only open 40 hours a week. Our library, the North Shore Library is open over 60 hours a week. Um, it's, it's basically buying an inferior scaled down version of a library if we were to, to, to think about partnering with Brown Deer. And I know for the, those of you who live in the Northwest corner of the city, that's really close for you. From where I live, I, it's a horse apiece. I can walk to Villard. I can bike over to Whitefish Bay faster than I could ever get up to Brown Deer or to Bayside for that matter. Um, and so um, you know, to me, the, it, partnering with Brown Deer just isn't really an option because if we wanted to keep it in Glendale, we'd just keep it in Glendale. Um, cost comparisons. You know, If we go out on our own, we know we have to go to referendum. The city of Glendale does not have the money to buy property or build property, build a library, renovate a building to create a library and fully foot furnish that library and operate it at a budget of 900,000 to a million a year. We're gonna have to go to referendum and ask our voters, are you willing to spend an extra 60 to $75 a year in your property taxes to have a library here in Glendale? Um, and, and so, um, so you know, the cost comparison right now the easiest solution for us is to go back into the North Shore Library and to consider the Bayside option. So the proposal that is before us tonight, because I've had people ask this timeline, why does it have to be tonight? Why are we having to rush in on this? Essentially, tonight we're being asked to approve a resolution that says, if these other conditions are met by December 31st, then this council would vote to approve the existing library agreement. If you vote down the resolution tonight, there is no other option but a Glendale library, period. We've already voted, we've already given notice to leave the other library. And if we don't advance this resolution and give it a 90 day chance to see if it can actually negotiate all these other conditions, then there is only one option, period. And so I'm asking you today to approve the resolution to give staff 90 days to see if they can actually come up with the capital agreement? Can they come up with the timeline? Can they answer all those other questions? Can we get a window of five years instead of 20 and negotiate it into the agreement? But basically a resolution doesn't put my signature on anything. I'm not signing anything until December 31st, period. So I'm asking you all to consider that if you take the resolution off the table, then you take it off the table permanently. And our only option at that point is to go with a Glendale uh, library. Now, that being said, 
Rachel and I met earlier this week and I said, I still have doubts because I've had doubts about this, you know, working with these communities over a library. We work with them so beautifully on everything else, but on this library, there have been points of contention we have never been able to get around. And I said, so by December 31st, I don't sign this. We don't move forward as a community with the other three. How quickly could we be prepared to go to a referendum? She informs me we have to have something essentially at our first meeting in January. So I said, well, can you, can staff continue to prepare all the information we would need to be able to vote on a referendum immediately, even if it ends up being a wasted effort? And she said, yes, staff can be fully prepared to provide all of the information we would need to provide to the community if we were to go to, a, if we were to vote in January to put a referendum on the April ballot. So we would still have from now through January or through December 31st, two options on the table if you approve the resolution tonight. So like I said, I'm willing to give preliminary support. I will refuse to sign anything until December 31st. Just like we would be the last community to vote, the other three have now approved this. The other two approved it tonight, Fox Point approved it last week. If you approve it tonight, then when this comes back to us in December, you know, and if all the conditions are met and you approve the final, you know, me signing the final agreement, I will wait until the agreement shows up here that already has the village presidents in River Hills, Bayside and Fox Point signature on it before I add mine as the last and final signature, because we have been burned and I do not want us to be burned again. But I also think that we have a responsibility to the residents of the city and to long term relationships in the North Shore. To to at least advance the resolution tonight and make sure that we continue to have two options on the table through the end of the year. And the last thing I will add is I've had some preliminary conversations uh, about more shared services with some of our fellow North Shore communities, including one of the biggest ones. 25 years ago, we consolidated fire. We have one of the best fire departments in the world. One of like only 200 in the world that are internationally accredited. I believe that if we were to move forward as a North Shore with a consolidated seven community police department, we would have the same kind of exceptional service across the North Shore, but that conversation cannot even happen if we tell the rest of the North Shore library communities, yeah, we're not really willing to work with you unless it's on our terms. I would say no agreement is perfect for every community. This isn't perfect for us. It's not perfect for the other communities either, but I'm willing to give it a 90 day chance. So that, that's my two cents worth or more like 10 minutes worth, sorry. Um, Alderwoman Shaw and then Alderman Schmelzling. Just a comment from when you're talking about if we have to go to a referendum and asking the public, the citizens of Glendale to support an additional, you said $60? Between 60 and 75 or what the preliminary numbers show. We won't know until staff have a chance over the next few months to put and that was all the for details. Yeah. I understand, I just wanna make sure that it'd be an increase in your tax, tax dollars to, to the city to support this. You also have to re remember that there's a large portion of um, people who have fixed income. And then with also the talk of Social Security having changing in, in their issuance of how much dollars go to the individuals who are on fixed income. And that is a large portion of our citizenship is we do have a large senior population. Don't forget about that. And they do also use the library more so than the younger people on average. Alderman Schmelzling. All right, well, I think we've all had an opportunity to, to talk here. So before we get to, you know, being forced into a motion, uh, I'd like to just propose a couple things and see if anything gets traction here. Um, so we, uh, we had a library committee that had some great ideas and they are experts on libraries. Uh, I know this would not align to the, what I figure is a, real or unreal, I have no idea. I do IT project management. I know there's things that can happen in, in projects that throw things off the rails, but you can get them back on. But we have we have a bunch of options. We could lay things over. We could go to the library committee. We could even go to the referendum. These are all things that were brought up just today in this room. And uh, we wouldn't have that without some public input. So first of all, I would move to see if this is something that the library committee would review. And if we feel that that is something we'd like to do. Let's, let's run it by them. And if we feel that that's not something in our best interest due to schedule, then let's see where that goes. So I, I'm, I'm gonna rule that motion out of order. And the reason is because the library review committee in their final report already did weigh in on a Bayside option. It's in the report. 
I don't think they had the full review of the contract terms, the capital costs. I don't think they actually even really looked at that under a full consideration because it was just high level. So I guess I question if that's out of order. I mean, you're asking them to review something that they, they did get. Uh, have they, they seen the contract that the public now gets to see? I, no, I guess no, they I'm, have not. They have not seen the final agreement that was okay. negotiated and those negotiations were completed. last. So time. I'm just throwing it out there. And uh, I, I'm just trying to get the discussion started versus going directly into something that would be motioned, seconded, and then we have to make that decision versus some other decisions. It's so I would, decision, say, I would say, I would say, what what you could do is tonight we have before us a resolution that you would like a recommendation from the library committee before the final agreement is signed. We're already going down the road then to to exclude the. Uh, I see what you're saying. We could do tonight that. Tonight is a resolution that says, if all these other conditions are met, we would intend as a community to sign the agreement. You guys still have to vote in December as to whether or not those conditions have been met to your satisfaction. If you have not, if they have not been met to your satisfaction, then you're going to direct me not to sign it in December. We could amend the agreement. But, to, but tonight, the resolution itself is, the, is what is on the agenda. And the resolution itself can't be referred to committee. It has to be considered tonight because the window closes tonight. Like Bayside is meeting right now to approve advancing the project. And they're waiting to hear from us to see if we approve this agreement because a four community library as opposed to a three community library that is only half of the residents of the North Shore changes the project that they're looking at approving right oh, now. I, that I is why the timeline is for yeah, tonight. Yeah, but they have a planned development. It doesn't go down to the design specifically at this point from what I've seen on their agendas. I understand that. I've been informed that if we do not vote one way or another, if we don't vote on the resolution, we've made a decision and we aren't going to be a, a part of the North Shore Library if they were to move forward. Alderman Doherty. Legal aspect. The, the outs appear to be right, just talking about what's in section two. How out can we be? That's my question. I don't want to be bound if we end up, they don't raise the money. That's not really referenced exactly, right? That there'll be zero cost. That doesn't come up in here. There's things in here that if those things all happened and we all knew they happened already, we'd probably have a different discussion tonight. So section two of the, the draft agreement that the resolution, section two of the, the resolution, resolution itself just talks about, you know, these points had to be agreed to. We really haven't agreed to a uh, to a preliminary budget, but it says that. Is that still? So I'm, there's parts of this I want to know is if we move forward tonight. The preliminary budget is in the agreement. It's in it, the preliminary budget is in the agreement. The capital budget, the outlay of expenditures up front, is what has to be agreed to. And if they come back to us with say, yeah, Glendale's portion is going to be four million dollars. I fully expect you in December to say for $4 million, we'll just go build our own library. <laughs> so but my concern uh, is that yeah. not being cornered when we finally could see more of it, because that's part of it. We'd have time to gather some more input and we'd have time to decide that, okay, this isn't a good deal for Glendale. I just don't want to be where it's like, well, you guys voted tonight. Now we're in. I mean, I could be in, if you will, if a whole bunch of conditions that cannot be known right now were known. So let, let me reframe what I said earlier to, to sort of answer your question. There is an agreement, a library agreement, that is not yet finalized and ready for any signatures. However, the resolution tonight allows us to continue to be a party at the table and a part of those, the, those conversations. If you vote down the resolution tonight, we are no longer at the table with the other three communities. They will do their best to move forward if they can, but the only option on the table for us after tonight is going to be a Glendale library. And we're gonna to have to figure out how we pay for it. And we're gonna to have to cross our fingers and hope our residents vote for a referendum. But this, this no long, but all these conditions that still have to be met before you would direct me to sign it. What this says is we intend to, if you can meet these conditions to our satisfaction, but it come December, if you guys are not happy with the conditions that are laid out, you're the, the best we could get to, then you tell me not to sign it and we'll move forward with referendum and our own Glendale Library. But tonight is the resolution that allows us to continue to have a seat at the table. If you vote that down, what you're saying is Bayside 
and, and being a partner with the other three communities is not something you ever want to have on the table again. It will be off the table. And I would also add that probably any other future agreements of, of consolidation or shared services of anything that isn't currently shared is probably off the table too, so. It, I, I'm sorry, but I'm gonna disagree with you a little bit because okay. <laughs> we have done some horrible, you know, some good faith efforts when it came to the other communities and we still came in with the agreements and we've done some different agreements since then. So I don't think it's that that deep into the point that, you know, our, our, our North Shore lives are over because we don't do this agreement. Um, but I also, I, I, I am really having a hard time going back and forth because I believe I trust in Rachel, I trust in John, I trust in the, the work that the city has done. Um, I just have one other question and then I think I'm okay. So the suggestions that we have made tonight, even if we, if we sign this agreement or we vote this agreement, you, there is possible that some of the things that we have suggested can be resolved because I want to know one way or the other, like the the timing, the, uh, the terms of the agreement. I can't guarantee. They'll I know make you, a change, you can't right? I can anything, I but... can ask about the the terms of the agreement because that was something that we had asked for. I can ask if they'd be willing to amend the years. I don't know that I'll get a five year. I might be able to get ten or fifteen. I could, in in terms of something Alderman Doherty brought up and. Uh, uh, I thought he was going to get right to what's the single biggest contingency when you said two, more specifically, it's 2C. And one of the reasons, and keep in mind, this wasn't coincidentally my approach to it, but one I ultimately acquiesced to with the other attorneys. If you look at 2C, 2C in that resolution says that before this gets signed, the stuff the mayor was talking about and all the fears that you're talking about. 2C says that Fox Point, Bayside, River Hills, and Glendale have negotiated and agreed uh, to a budget to complete construction. And in a way, what's kind of mystifying about that is this timeline that everybody is concerned about. Why are they forcing this on us? Why do we have to do it now? We'll do it now. And it's all because the developer needs assurances. The developer needs assurances. I'll tell you real candidly, if I was the attorney for the developer, I would tell them that this resolution isn't much of an assurance because it really isn't. Because if you want a contingency, if you want a reason that uh, you would reach that point as the mayor is talking about where he doesn't sign and the council doesn't approve that the contingencies have met, the biggest part of this whole thing, the biggest task you have to do isn't is it gonna be five years or 20 years, it's gonna be how much you're gonna put in. If you don't reach an agreement as to that, then you haven't committed to anything. In other words, what I'm saying is 2C is not just an out, it's, it's a huge out. Because for example, let's say we're in mid-December and the idea that uh, there was gonna be a certain amount of money raised by donations and all that, but just hypothetically, let's say it's not there. We'd all optimistically love to see it be there, be there in full, but it's not there. And now all of a sudden you find that that 4 million, which is 2 million to Glendale is now 6 million, which is 3 million to Glendale. You're not gonna approve it. In other words, as, as much as I don't wanna invade your territory um, or take sides on how big a commitment are we making or not making, I think the simplest way to look at it is that you're agreeing that you would do this after it happened first big agreement that's cost. If you don't have an agreement that satisfies two. It doesn't happen. It doesn't happen for Glendale. Still have that. Uh, and whether that changes some of your minds one way or another, or which way you want to go, don't sell that contingency short. That's the only reason, for example, I acquiesced to my uh, co counsel uh, about doing this resolution because you haven't entered into an enforceable agreement as of tonight. Whether you wanna do this or not, that's your decision. But if the fear is, if we do this, there is absolutely no turning back, no out, then that isn't really a, a 
correct, because there is, because that's a big thing to have to do. The, the biggest thing really that you have to do isn't done yet. And unless it gets done, it doesn't happen. And I hope I put that in a way that made sense. Yes. Alderman Galhard. Uh, I understand the, the financial you know, angle of this and that it would be uh, cheaper to go with the Bayside uh, arrangement, but uh, I guess I'll just reiterate my, my greatest fear here is that if we go along with this Bayside uh, agreement, we're gonna be paying for a library for uh, however many years uh, and our residents aren't gonna go there. Uh, and then, I mean, we, we've saved money, but to what end? I mean, if we don't have residents that are using the library that we're paying for, uh, it doesn't seem to be um, a good outcome for our uh, residents. Alderman Weezy. Thank you. Um, during your comments about the potential shared or the shared services that we currently have in the North Shore, we do have wonderful services shared between communities in many instances. However, if you're looking at just the library, three of the seven communities have their own. So whether we have our own, you know, make it four or three, you know, to me that doesn't, you know, that part doesn't hold water. Um, now, uh, there's a couple of procedural statements I'd like to make regarding the, um, if we do, you know, on the resolution, and you know, this is this is going to be thorny. I understand, but I'm going to go with it anyway, because uh, the city of Glendale is organized as a strong council set up where we are the decision makers. And I would uh, request that two um, items be modified in their language. It's item 2D, um, that that change be made to read to the terms, uh, terms to the satisfaction of the common council in a form approved by the city attorney. Uh, because we as a council need to approve that and wanna make sure that is perfectly clear and then change item three to read upon authorization from the common council, the mayor and city clerk are authorized and directed, et cetera. So I believe that's a motion. Um, I'll, make, I'll make that a motion. Please. I think what you're saying though about, about uh, D, it is already in there, right? It, the, the mayor, the city administrator upon final approval by the common council in a form approved by the city attorney. So it, that part of, of your motion, I believe, is already in the agreement. Well, this is, this is stating the Common Council is first before anything. So, oh, am I no longer negotiating? Minor, okay. It's a minor point, but it's something that, you know, we need to look at the future record as well. Okay, so moving to the, the order would be, the, I guess, the um, final approval by the Common Council. Um, once again, the terms would, uh, the okay. terminology would be in item D, um, all such assurance shall demonstrate terms to the satisfaction of the common council, comma, in a form approved by the city attorney. And so then removing the mayor and the city administrator entirely from the. That is correct. And then item three would be restated on authorization from the common council, the mayor and city clerk are authorized and directed, et cetera. Okay, so basically you guys are gonna be the ones carrying on the negotiations and Rachel and I don't have anything to do with it. Okay, I, I, I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna quibble over 2D because it already says, all such assurances shall demonstrate terms to the satisfaction of the mayor and the city administrator upon final approval from the common council. The thing is the people at the table right now are Rachel and me. Rachel talking with the managers and I've been talking with the village presidents. And so we're the ones that are gonna reach the terms of satisfaction that are satisfactory to us first. And then it's gonna to come to this common council and then you're gonna vote and tell me and direct me to sign it or not sign it. And then the city attorney signs off on the language. So I, I mean, 2D is essentially saying that the common council now is going to take over the negotiations. The mayor and the city administrator, doesn't matter what we think on it. I mean, honestly, that's what you're saying. 
I, I'm totally fine with your number three, right? That you know, that you guys would approve and direct the mayor and city clerk to be authorized to sign it. Absolutely fine with that. But to but basically removing the mayor and city administrator from 2D is removing us from the from any more conversations with the rest of the folks in the North Shore, and we're the ones that have been having the conversations. So I, I you can make that motion, and if you guys approve it, then you know you guys figure out among the six of you who's going to be the ones talking to the other communities because Rachel and I will be out of it. Done. Yeah, I mean, the Common Council is a decision maker, and I think it, with uh, Alderman Weezy's modification, it's makely just basically saying that uh, the Common Council is making the decision there, uh, which is you know, what we do. I mean, if you look at all the other resolutions that we've passed, whether it's Bird City USA or what have you, there's a motion, uh, it's passed by the council, uh, and then uh, the mayor uh, signs off on the resolution uh, and it's published by the clerk. I mean, that's just the regular way of doing business. Um, so, I, you know, it, it makes perfect sense to, to amend the language to, you know, what we do here, so. I, I guess I, I wasn't may, reading it that I way, Brian. May I say something, please? Alderman Vukovic. Um, I, I disagree with um, Alderman, respectfully disagree with Alderman Wheezy. This council, and I, I think even in our ordinance, it's city business is handled by um, the city administrator. She puts it together. She she you know gives us all our information and then we vote on it at no time in our ordinance does it say that we're going to negotiate or that we need to decide or that we do any we are just using what she tells us and what the mayor says and then we vote on that now if we don't like what she says or we don't like the direction we can vote against it and we can use amendments and change it but overall, it's her job and the mayor's job to put it together and then we vote collectively on it. So I disagree. I agree with the mayor and I disagree um, with uh, Alderman Weezy and Gelhart on this, this particular issue. So I'm, I'm gonna ask if you wanna propose those things, if you propose them as two separate amendments. Uh, uh, what I'll do is, you know, hearing that discussion, I'll acquiesce on 2D, but I'll stand firm on three. Okay, could you just read that motion then? Then uh, for um, item three in the resolution, change it to read, upon authorization from the common council, the mayor and city clerk are authorized and directed uh, to execute the agreement upon satisfaction of all conditions stated in section two above. Okay, is there a second? I'd second that. So, okay, moved by Alderman Weezy, seconded by Alderman Doherty. Is there any discussion on the amendment? Please read it one more time. Could you believe it one more, of course. Read it one more time? Thank you. Uh, the uh, language would change to, upon authorization from the Common Council, the mayor and city clerk are authorized and directed to execute the agreement upon satisfaction of all conditions stated in section two above. Okay, any further discussion? Okay, all those in favor of the amendment, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay, a vote of uh, five to one, motion carries. So now we do have an amended resolution before us. I, um, no, item number three has been amended. Um, so now we're back to the, um, can I have, a, actually, we did that before we actually put the full resolution. We didn't make a motion to the resolution. So now would you move the resolution with that amendment, please? Why? Well, I mean, you amended. We didn't have a res. You actually, we just approved something that we we didn't approve it. Right. We didn't approve anything. Basically, like one more piece of discussion before, because um, we're kind of out of order already. Yeah, right now we're out of order. <laughs> You're right. You moved a res. You moved I'm an sorry. amendment to the resolution I, before the resolution was moved. I apologize. So I'm going to ask. Actually, could I have somebody move the resolution, please? I moved. Moved by Alderman Vukovic. Is there a second? Second. Second by Alderman Shaw. Okay, now, Alderman Weezy, would you like to offer your amendment in number three? <laughs> okay, all right, thank you. All right, so he's uh, offered- I apologize. His... That's fine, do you wanna move your amendment now? Yes. Okay, and it's, will you second it, Alderman Doherty? I second it. Okay, all those in favor of the amendment, please say aye. 
Aye. Aye. Okay, motion carries. Now we have an amended resolution and we are debating and discussing it. And I will recognize right. Alderman Schmelzley. So uh, point of order, did you recognize that she, um, Alderman, Alderwoman Shaw voted no on that amendment? Okay. Yeah, she just did. wanted to make sure yep. that. Yeah. All right. Um, it was five to one. Got it. Yep. So just, just reading this through, you know, since it's now moved and seconded, so we're actually onto this. Um, ultimately, the financial is a huge out. That's, that's great. And I'm glad that's in here. Um, but really, if it comes down to us paying nothing, which is what I'm expecting, that's my expectation, because we are currently still paying 49% of the operating costs for a library that will not be in Glendale, um, that 22-ish percent of us probably go to. Um, and that'll probably go down because it's further away. But all that said, that's really what we have here in, in front of us. Because the other things, I, I see no real, we don't have any real skin in that game. That's more if they don't have this together within the timeframes, that's on them to fall apart. So just clarifying for everybody, that's kind of what I see is happening here. And so really once we go down this road, if we, they come back and they fund the whole thing, we're like, all right, I guess we're in. Um, and they can pull off the development. Um, so I, I still think that I would feel more comfortable having this reviewed in more detail. Um, I would again do another motion. I think that we should also have this at least be reviewed with a recommendation back from the library committee before the end of this time frame, And that would at least give me more comfort in how we are um, really stacking this against what we have already reviewed. And you did say they disbanded. I, I did not realize that. I thought their goal was to drive us forward all the way through if we had to go to referendum and pick a location and all of that. So that's what I would be moving is, I guess, um, between C and D, that there would be a review and a recommendation. Doesn't mean have to go by it to the, to the council for review. You want to just add that as E? Sure. And that the, the final, that the final library, once details have been negotiated on the final library agreement, it would be referred to the library review committee to make a recommendation. Yeah, I would say the, the agreement and the funding is, is the key and whatever plans they come up with. Is that a motion? That's a That's motion. A motion. Okay. Is there a second to that motion? And we but you're treating that as a motion to amend the existing motion. Otherwise, I am, to add an item to it. it would be amend the existing motion that's been amended to add a section E, which would be the um, the plans being presented for above mentioned items. I, I guess they would be the ones that are more specific to the the layout and such. I don't know how you would write that up. How, how about how about this? Yeah. Um, how about uh, the item that you're making a, a motion to to add an item E? And how does this language sound to you? That um, once negotiations have produced uh, a final draft of an agreement, that that draft must be referred to the library review committee to make a recommendation to the comic. I would say draft agreements, and I would say site plan or something, because right now all we have is one building. And yeah, it's all part of that. Yep, yeah. It's all part of the agreement. Right. Because that would be what I would like to at least have someone review with an actual set of library eyes. And okay. then we can decide from there. The That's financial. a motion then. Is there a second? Second. Second of Alderman Weezy. All right. So Rachel, did you get that? It's insertion of an item E. Okay. So now we're discussing this amendment. This is an amendment to add an item E. Alderman Vukovic. This is the what will I understand that the library board will have expertise on the actual library itself, but what expertise will they have on capital budget, on cost, on the agreement in itself? I understand that committee, the committee, I know, committee. I just don't, and I understand it. Thank you for correcting. I just don't. I just, we do things like for no reason. It's, it's not, I'm sorry, I apologize. Um, 
this right now, it's, it's not beneficial. We have Rachel to tell us, we have how many, we have you and we have, what's the other boy's name? Um, Sean, Sean. <laughs> we, I'm sorry. Um, we have the treasurer, we have an accountant, okay. we have a bunch of other, you know, people who are looking at, we're gonna have John until, you know, he goes and we have another attorney. What is that library committee going to bring that these people can't bring? What a library should look like in Bayside if we're gonna use it. Do you not think they look at what they're doing to make sure things are gonna work out? So that's what they've been doing so this whole time. Is my, that was it's well just done. My, wait, 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 one at a time, I need hands. That was just my um, statement yeah. and in discussion. That's okay. All. So I, I actually, I think this is a good idea. We appoint, when those people came in from the library review committee and I reviewed all of their qualifications, they were all qualified to tell us exactly what a library should have. Um, and so I, I don't, um, I, I, I think getting an extra set of eyes um, is, is not a bad thing. So um, who wants to speak, Elder, or sorry, I, City Administrator. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, and, and it's not that I, I think this is, is a bad idea that we need uh, people on a library review committee or the library board, North Shore Library Board, to have expertise for these things. But it's, you're not going to see the plans for a library out the gate until they have the fundraising for it. And then the library board, North Shore Library Board, is the one that is going to be charged with designing the interior and making sure that it functions properly. It's not going to be the city of Glendale or uh, the city of, or the village of Bayside. It will be the library board and the people that are appointed to there. So, so long as Glendale is appointing people for those uh, positions that have that expertise, that's where that would come in, in my opinion. Now, as far as uh, the review of the other items and you make it a contingency and it doesn't match those other contingencies of the other communities, what is, if the library board comes in with a recommendation one way or another and you don't agree one way or another, um, is it just an out for Glendale? And is that going to be a concern for the other communities that we're just adding another way to get out beyond what those other communities have? So I just want to put that out there. At a point of order. Alderman Doherty. Could we have that be a separate <coughs> uh, thing today and not have it tied in here in the sense the outs are in here, but we still as Glendale, I think should be doing more homework between now and would come to time to sign or not sign. So we could have that still be a point, Steve, I think it's worth doing, but it wouldn't have to be in this, I don't it, think. Jim has started what would be my comments about two or three times now, <laughs> but I'm not sharing a dime with you, just so you know. <laughs> but not. the, uh, the, the, the uh, uh, I, I get the logic behind Alderman Schnelzing's uh, suggestion, and I uh, can envision this group doing this and getting input from that committee, but I think that's between you and that committee. I don't think that's between you and the other communities adopting this. In other words, you can call to do that and you can do it on your own and you can involve your committee. But if you put the committee in here, number one, you've deviated from the form of the resolution that already kind of surprises me that it gives the developer a comfort level for the reasons I said earlier. And now you're presenting that resolution to a developer who's going to spend somewhere around 160 bucks a square, you know, on, on what uh, that space would be. And now there's a committee that also has input. Uh, it's not, it's not what was discussed and you can still do it. Just do it procedurally a different way, not in the resolution. I appreciate the input from the city attorney. This is our resolution. This is Glendale's resolution. This is not, we're talking about the resolution. Right. So we, we've added something into the resolution that is a step that we that this council wants the city administrator and the mayor to make sure is, um, it ha has been taken before they vote on the, the final agreement at some point in December. Um, and the, the having the library review committee review the document is not that um, that they're going to be uh, able to veto the the project or something of that nature, they would be simply reviewing it based on all the research they did for us as a city on forming our own Glendale Library. What is their recommendation about whether or not 
this new agreement with the other three communities would meet the needs of Glendale's residents. And That's so, exactly what might scare off the developer. I, it's your call. Sure. But you can do everything you want to do as, as Glendale. We could still it's have it with, committee. without having it in the it's resolution, we could still refer it. Yeah. Alderman Doherty. Yeah, that's what I'm suggesting is we we do exactly that. I think it's the right thing to do. We should also try to figure out how to get more input from our residents, but that doesn't have to be part of this. I, I think if I was a developer, if he's going to get any comfort from it enough to move forward, we'd be better off to leave this alone and have that as another item as a resolution that we just put forward that we want to do the committee part and get it done before 1231. So we, we do have a motion and a second. So the motion was made by Alderman Schmelzling. Who made the second? Alderman Weezy. Okay, thank you. Um, so Alderman Weezy next and Alderman Schmelzling. Uh, thank you. The, this is a little bit off. Well, we probably should finish this motion first before I ask my question. Okay, Alderman See. Schmelzling. Yeah, so really, I just, part of me is thinking we are only the first set of eyes that are seeing this and there are other. And so from any type of like, by the end of the year, when this all is supposed to come together, we should know the budget. If it comes in at zero, then we don't have any out. What if this turns into the first half of the first floor and it'll be in a basement? You know, I don't have that. I know they said it's on the first floor in the development agreement. So fair enough. All right, but I'm trying to think of other things that could come up that a library committee, one person asked me about parking. All it has is a ratio in there about parking. It doesn't say like, is there enough parking? Is there gonna be parking for just the hotel there? Or, you know, some of these things that it's very preliminary. And I think we're jumping full feet in with this. If it comes back that they do fund all the, all the capital, great. But that also means that if this doesn't look right, we should have that review as well. Um, that's kind of where my mind is at. So I think it makes sense to have it in and it's our resolution. It's our half of the funding. Let's remember that for the cap for the ongoing costs. I think we're really um, putting a lot into this without seeing what it would look like. Any other discussion on the amendment? All right, uh, we'll call for a vote and I'm just gonna ask for a roll call because I'm sure it's gonna be divided and I'm not gonna be able to tell. So um, we'll call for a vote. Alderman Vukovic. Alderman Doherty. Point of order. We're the voting amendment. on the amendment that would include, that would e. direct the library committee to give us a, an a opinion. No. Alderman, Alderman Gellhard. Yes. Alderman, Alderman Weezy. Yes. Alderman Schmelzing. Yes. Alderman Shaw. No. That's three to three. I'm going to vote no. I'm going to agree with Alderman Doherty that this is, we can still refer it to them and get a, their opinion without having it in the resolution. Okay, so I'll vote no. That's a four to three vote and it fails. All right, so now we have um, a resolution before us. It has one amendment on it, and I'm going to uh, uh, turn over the mic to uh, Alderman Weezy. I have my own thing. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we're not sharing <laughs> turn over the uh there floor all right uh just one question before we vote on the resolution is uh, cycling back to the uh discussion of uh asking for a change of terms uh, for the five instead of 20 years down to five or whatever i um, can't change the agreement now okay <laughs> that was interesting uh, anyway uh what is the chance that hearing that it would uh, cause the other communities to say no and blow up the agreement idea oh um the I, question is, is i've that, been informed that that's a no they um, they don't want to change the the terms of the agreement i'm sorry i i've just been informed that they have no intention of changing the terms of the agreement and and we we actually heard that from we, we heard it. Well, that's and, what that was. Yes. Who, who made that statement? President Walney. <laughs> okay. Who, who joined our meeting but was not muted. Exactly. So he is muted. <laughs> um, and he's also texted Rachel, or somebody's well, texted sorry. Rachel. <laughs> well, okay. We agree to the time frame. What was that? Um, you know, and so um, this now may factor into our approval or disapproval of this resolution. So. So what is that? Once Can again, I make Rachel? another suggestion on that? Yep. City because Attorney. Uh, if, 
the length of the term is probably going to be discussed when you negotiate the contributions, that big thing that's out with 2C. In, in terms of uh, even on a small office, you know, a, a 1500 square foot office space, you're probably not going to see any less than an eight to 10 year release because you need that term to justify the build out costs. The shorter you make that term, the more expensive you're going to make that uh, uh, that uh, agreement you're trying to negotiate as 2C. Well, that's going to work. Sorry about that. I'm not used to. We, we already decided I can't use this mic until I die it, so I'll <laughs> get up to it. Uh, Jim, you need to speak into your mic, too. <laughs> Good. Yeah. Right. That's assuming that the money's coming in in a normal rent manner. That's not what we're assuming. Um, we're assuming it's going to be pre funded. You're right. You're absolutely correct. And I, I don't, I don't want to be a naysayer on that, but I, you know, you may find as this thing comes back to you, $4 million is a lot of money to raise. And what, what are you going to do if the agreement that comes back to you has 3 million? You know, and then that's 500 to you, but you've got a building to sell. I'm saying they're all tied together. Uh, and, and you're absolutely correct. I'm reflecting. But they don't have the same time frame that you do in a normal transaction where you want to exactly. borrow the money, going to get rent payments, not exactly. going to match this out and go for 20 year amortization. That's not what we're talking about. And I, and I did not mean to sound particularly skeptical about 4 million, but 4 million is a lot of money to raise. Absolutely. All right, so we now have a resolution before us. There's one amendment that was approved. And so we have this amended agreement uh, or it's amended resolution. And uh, we are still in a period now of debate and discussion on the resolution. Is there anyone else wishing to speak about the resolution? All right, then I'm gonna call for a roll call vote. Oh, sorry, Alderman Weezy, go ahead. Thank you, I'm sorry. Um, it's just that now that we've heard that there will be no modification to the terms, uh, that gives, gives me pause in consideration of this whole draft agreement. Uh, anyone else? Alderman Schmelzling? Some other fun facts. Um, I, uh, at one point I went through and as we were thinking about because really what we're saying here is if we say no, we're going to referendum. Um, but Fox Point, um, I just did the calculation from a tax bill, so you can question my numbers. Um, they're uh, 575 per 1,000, uh, Bayside 691, and then Glendale's at 727. So um, our taxes are already a little bit higher than those other neighbors, but we are lower than Brown Deer. Um, so that's my calculations, and I'm sure some of the other staff members probably might have those numbers better off the top of their head. So just something to consider as we talk about potentially adding another 30 cents to that. Uh, just a reminder that those numbers that Alderman Schmelzlein indicated are assessed values. When we compare communities, we should be comparing equalized values. All right. That's okay. I'm just, just reminder. <laughs> I'm hoping it's rather similar. All right, any further discussion? Okay, so we now have, we've moved a resolution. We've made one, uh, one change to it in item three, uh, and we're now ready to vote because I don't see anyone else wishing to speak. So I'm gonna ask the city administrator if you would please call the roll. Alderman Vukovic. Yes. Alderman Doherty. Yes. Alderman Gelhard. I don't believe that we should be locked into an agreement until 2045, I'm gonna vote no. Alderman Wheezy. Alderman Schmelzling. Alderman Sorry, Shaw. Can you, can you say that again yes. on the microphone? Thank you. Yes. That would be a, a four to two. Okay. So in a four to two vote, the resolution is approved. And we have no other items before us for consideration tonight. So I am going to uh, ask for a motion to adjourn. How's oh. that? Alderman Doherty? Can you speak into your microphone? I'd like to bring back the point that uh, Steve brought up that we'd have before the end of the year, the library committee or 
whatever group we can say would give us a give us a read back on what they're saying. Okay. Well, I'll put on next agenda. Right. I'm just right. saying I want it. Agenda. I want. I don't want that to die. I think it was the right thing to do. I just don't think we could put it in that agreement. So I think right. it's the right thing. Okay. Can we put it on the agenda for the next meeting? Okay. So that's an item for the agenda for the next meeting. Perfect. Thank you. All right. Can I have a motion to adjourn, please? I move. Move by Alderman Vukovic. Is there second. a second? Second by Alderman Shaw. All those in favor of adjourning, say aye. 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 Opposed. We stand adjourned. Yeah.